Hey guys, it's me Brian from Echo One USA and today I'm going to show you the unboxing and gearbox of the Echo One Genesis OCW. Uh, if you're curious, you're like, wait a minute, you already have one. We have the metal version and now we have the polymer version, kind of like we do with the XCRs. So if you like the metal one, if you can't afford it, we got you covered. Okay, cardboard lid, like all of our products, the foam, you have a 30 day warranty card, keep the orange tip on and you're good. You have an A4 stick battery, a mini wall charger, you have a 550 high cap. You have some spare parts here, you're probably saying, I don't know what that is. And then you have the rifle. Don't worry, it's not broken. Basically, you have the ambi charging handle and it'd be too much in the box, so you have to slightly assemble. And the mag key and also front sight adjustment. So you're probably saying, well, how do I go ahead and assemble this? Well, all you do, grab your charging handle like so, slide it on, and you can rest it on the table. Then you have a the little bar with the release button for the dust cover and the spring. Slide it on like so, press forward. I'm gonna have to wiggle a little, and Hold on, there you go. Essentially, you line it up back here so it's locked in place, and there's a hole right here. So now, charging handle is here. I don't know if you can see that, but pretty basic. And then you can put on your top dust cover. And cool. Okay, and what another cool thing about this is the stock battery is an A4, but if, say, if you want to upgrade, you can always run a 10.8 because you have room for extra cells and the plug, so you're good, or you can use a LiPo. You're probably saying, I want to use Echo One LiPo, like a little stick one. Unfortunately, it won't fit unless you somehow cram it in here, but then you might have troubles adjusting the hop-up and or removing the dust cover. So if you use like a, I guess a King Arms or any other AK style stick LiPo, that would work fine. Okay. Let me go ahead and take this apart and show you what's cool on the inside and why you want to get the Genesis OCW to save the bank and kick ass on the field. Let's get started. First, dust cover button, press that, take that off. Use this to hold spare parts. Okay, press in and lift up, out. You'll see carry hand or the charging handle comes out like this and the rod goes in that hole right there. Put that there, you're good. Okay, just to make this easy, take off this crane stock. Cool thing is, it's like what you have on our Troy series, so you can wire it to use a buffer tube type lipo, or you can put it in there. And there's a hole wired through here, so you can wire it to the rear if you want. Okay, let's take this off. Basically, you have the four little screws, and I'm just using a 2.5 Allen. Up and out like that. Slide this up, make this um, vertical, and lift up and out like that. You're gonna have the four screws in there, and then you're gonna have the four nuts that clamp onto the barrel down here. Be careful not to like smack this, it might fall out. Continue using the 2.5 and take off the screw here and the screw here. and you have a little wire clip thing right here. Put those aside and it take up the bottom rail. This would kind of work for the OCW series. Press down, you have a little grooves here and the notches here. Put that aside, cool. Now, uh, just so it doesn't look at the bent, put this back. And this trunnion is metal, but the body is plastic and you have plastic rails. It keeps the cost down, but the important parts like the barrel, the trunnion are metal buffer tube is metal, gearbox is metal, of course. Okay, let me go ahead and take this off. Just gently tap this little pin. I'm tapping one way, you see the little grooves right there. So I continue just tapping. I don't have to hit it hard. Cool, slide this forward, it goes through there, okay. Now just use a two mil key to remove this little set screw. And you only need to use the tool once. Just put it aside so you don't lose it. 
And now for this pin, you're probably saying, oh, for the metal ones, you punch it clean through. Unfortunately, this one is a little different. Well, not unfortunately, it's not a bad thing. But you use a small flathead and just tap and kind of pr wedge it in there and just gently pry out and you're good. Pull this. There's not a hole that goes clean through. You could always modify it if you want to, but I really don't see the, the need or the time for that. Okay, keep the gun on safe. Just easier to line it up. The pair of pliers, just twist off, and the large screw head comes off. Notice how it's attached like so, in little grooves, and lifts up. You notice a little small notch here that works with the internal selector plate. Um, keep your selector lever nice and tight, not too loose, otherwise you will have problems in your fire mode. Use a Phillips screwdriver, remove the screw for the pistol grip, and bam. Um, for example, say if you want to um, pull your spring or release your spring, you can always just take off this screw and this motor cage and pull with a said tool to reset or unlock your gearbox pretty fast. You don't have to take this all apart to do that. Okay, lift up and out. Put this aside, don't really need this. Oh, if you want to get to the hop-up unit to change it, um, it is a one-piece polymer hop-up. You can change it to a metal if you wanted to. It already has a Madball bucket inside. Um, you just take off the two screws, slide the metal outer barrel forward, and your hop-up, and it just it's free. Okay, put that aside. Let's look at the gearbox. Okay, notice first off the piston is back, so you have to like pull the reverse latch. You see the little selector arms which I was talking about? Okay, now you have 8mm steel ball bearings, which are great. Boom, boom, we have six of those. For the motor, it's not a super torque, but it's a, like a good mid-grade decent torque. Has good pull, it's great. It's not like a standard one where there's no magnetic at all. Okay. Let's go ahead and take this apart and show you the internals on why the Genesis OCW is the best bang for your buck. It's about 160 bucks or so, give or take. And I'm just going to be using a Torx T8. So let's go ahead and take this off. Put this aside. And a lot of you guys are asking, hey, I need these. We do have these on the part shop, so don't worry. Put that aside going to use a small flathead to gently pry up, up, and up, pull the wires out, and then use the flathead again, and gently tap forward. Just slide it forward like that. Okay, cool. And before I get further, might as well pull the reverse latch. Okay, you see how you have the reverse latch and the bevel gear, it's on there solid. And the piston, it's not forward. I'm gonna go ahead and use a hook and pull. Okay, odd. Okay, lock it back. Okay, anyways, I guess it's jammed slightly on the tap plate. Going to open. Okay, cool. Open it up, and you'll see not a lot of grease or anything squirting in there. Notice the bearings. Also, you have shims, which are cool. Not a lot of shims, but just enough. You have a metal spring guide, which is solid. Um, it has a spacer to make up for the bearings, so you get a little more oomph in your FPS, which is good. The spring, it's like a 120. Um, gives you about 405 to 410 FPS. It will settle. So, out of the box of shooting, you're going to take it to the field, about 400, you're good. And you can use a modify M100 spring, and that gets you right at 350 to 355. So that means good air compression. Okay, let's look at the piston. Piston, it's 
uh, polycarb ported piston head, which is great. You have bearings on the inside, so that's good and sturdy. You have um, grooves on the side for the little grease and everything, good. You have reinforced pickup tooth for the first tooth, as you can see. Then you have the second tooth removed or sanded down, so you have better angle of engagement or AOE. Wee wee. So with that, it's good. Out of the box, you don't really need to change anything. I can link to you below. I will click, say right here, I'll put a video to show you the pain test and AOE of basically the stock piston using big ass lipos like that. So out of the box, it's good. Another thing you'll notice is steel gears. They have multi-stop latches, which are great. You don't have that wind back or that weird noise. Also, another cool thing is the large delayer. So when it's spinning, um, it just makes it easier and basically a longer loading time. It delays the loading time. So if you're using a LiPo or any other battery or high speed, like say if you want to put in a high speed motor, you know it can handle it. It's going to feed, not going to skip or anything like other guns have. You have shims on the bottom and you're good to go. Okay, let's look at the, the compression. Okay, well first off, tablet plate, it's flexible, and also it's cut for that high speed application in the future if you want to. Okay, pretty good air compression. You know, if you slowly press, yes, it's gonna leak out, but if you slam it forward there with the 400 FPS, it's good compression. The nozzle is a plastic. There is no O-ring, but a little bit of grease on there, it makes a great seal. So I guess let me go over the cool upgrades that this um, Genesis OCW has. You already have a Madball bucking installed. You have a reinforced piston, which is great for the AOE. You have a large delayer for LiPo use or high speed applications down the road or just out of the box. You have a metal spring guide, an M120 spring, eight millimeter steel bearings, which are great and a semi-decent, semi-torque motor. It's not super torque, but out of the box, this is a great rifle. This has been Brian from Echo NUSA. Thanks for watching.